So when it comes to board games, I'm really competitive. Whether it's against other players or against an AI, I want to win. In other words, I don't like losing. So after getting my butt kicked in the first game of Nemesis, I had to stand back and ask myself, did I just waste $200 on this freaking game? It was brutally punishing. But then a funny thing happened. I avoided my normal knee-jerk reaction to losing and asked myself a question. Why do so many people like this game? So I asked around and the answer surprised me. You see, people love the cinematic feel of the game. To get a sense of that, I'm going to ask you to go watch the 1977 movie Alien, directed by Ridley Scott and starring Sigourney Weaver. Then, go watch the 1986 movie Aliens, directed by James Cameron and also starring Sigourney Weaver. You see, half the fun of those movies is the tension. Sure, you're trying to survive, but often half the fun is dying in spectacular fashion. Everyone remember the scene of the alien coming out of the guy's chest? With that in mind, I'm going to teach you how to play the one to five player board game Nemesis, designed by Adam Kwapinski and published by Awaken Realms. Let's start with a high level overview of the game Nemesis. This is the game board. The game board has two sides. You're going to orient yours like you, I have it here with the bridge to the left and the engines over there in the hibernatorium in the middle. What you're looking for is these three red arrows. That is the starting side. The other side is harder and we're not going to be looking at it in this video. So this is the high level view of the game. You are playing a character. You have a character, an avatar in the game. That avatar has some statistics that help govern how it works. It also has a miniature. So let me show you what the miniatures look like. Okay, I've placed two miniatures on the board. So, your characters in this game are going to start in the center of the board in the hibernatorium. Okay, that's your, where you're going to wake up and the alarm is going to be going off and something is wrong. Now, the overall mission of this game is actually really simple. Really simple. There's only three things you need to do on the surface. First, you need to come over here to the bridge and make sure that the ship is headed to Earth. The next thing that you need to do, or at the same time if you have different characters, is to come over to one of these three engine spots and make sure that the engines are working. And if they're not, they need to be fixed. So the final thing to do is to get your characters back to the hibernatorium and put yourself back in hibernation before faster than light travel starts in which case you would be atomized if you were not safely in hibern hibernation. Now, that's the overview. Make sure the ship is headed to Earth, make sure the engines are working, and get back into the hibernatorium. Simple, right? Well, the game has two modes that add a little bit of complexity to it. The first mode is co-op mode, and in the co-op mode, all of the characters will have an additional objective. It's a card that you draw and it's random, so every time you play the game, they're different. The objectives just add a layer of complexity to the game, another layer of things that you have to do. Okay, so that's simple. To su succeed in that game, all characters have to, the same way, they have to make sure the ship is working, make sure the engines are working, complete their objective, whatever it may be, we'll talk about that later, and then get back to sleep in the hibernatorium. Now there's another mode of game, which is actually the main mode, which is called semi-co-op. In semi-co-op, every player gets two objectives, two objectives. And by a certain point in the game, you have to choose one of those two objectives to be your only objective. And in order to win the game, you have to complete that objective. Now here is the thing about those. They can be conflicting, which means you can have a different 
a totally different objective than I can and in fact they will be pitted straight up into conflict. Now if you go back to the movies and you watch the first movie like I asked you to, Alien, you'll remember that the android had a totally different mission and he was at odds with the rest of the crew, right? And what happened? A lot of people died because of him. I think you get the cinematic feel, right? And in the second movie, Aliens, you had another character, the one played by the company man. I think he was played by Paul Reiser. Right? And he had a different thing to do as well. Again, something that could cost people's lives. So the co-op mode, we're all gonna work together. We're gonna get the engines working. We're gonna get the ship headed to Earth and we're gonna get our minor objectives done. We're gonna get back safely to the hibernatorium. We're gonna go to sleep. Yay, we win. In the semi-co-op mode, same thing. You got to get this working. You got to get that working. You got to get back in here. For the most part, some of the objectives will make that a lot more complex, but you might have to be the only one to survive, or you might have to sneak an alien egg back home, or you might have to do all sorts of complex things. Now, we'll get into those in a little bit, but this is the overview. You have your two modes, your cooperative mode and your semi-co-op mode. All right, let's start by taking a look at the components together. So if you have your game, lay it out and we'll go over these components together. The first components we're gonna look at are these yellow triangles, which are noise markers. Now in this game, noise is very important. You wanna make the least amount of noise as you can. Why? Because noise attracts intruders. Now we have these little doors. They go onto standees and they are put on the map to indicate the corridors that have been blocked off. Either you'll block them off yourself or they'll happen accidentally. Either way, they add a complication to the game. These red cubes have two uses. One, they're ammo markers. So if you have a gun that has four ammunition on it, this, you'll have four of these red cubes. You'll also use them as damage markers, which you'll place on the intruders to show how many hits they have taken. Those little orange things, those are fire markers. Fire is bad aboard the Nemesis. If you get too much fire, the ship explodes. Okay, these are broken gears. Let me show them to you. You can tell that they're broken there. Okay. As you explore the ship, you'll find many rooms are malfunctioning and broken, so you'll throw a malfunction marker in the room. I'll show you how that works later on. Here's the big thing to understand. If you get too many of these, the ship breaks in half and explodes and you all die. Okay, these little crystal markers are status markers right here. You'll put them on your character board, which I'm gonna show you soon enough to show certain statuses. They are also used to show the countdown timer down here for how many rounds you have until the ship goes into faster than light travel again. And here in the lower left hand corner of the board is the self-destruct sequence. So if for some reason the self-destruct sequence gets started, you will put a marker here and then you will have six rounds until the ship goes bluey. Finally, up here in the cockpit, there are four destinations that the ship can go to. Four destinations. Now you want it to go to Earth, but it's always going to B. Now I'll later on show you how you determine where it's actually going, whether B is Earth or not. But that's the other use for the status marker. And this is my cat Mungo. Apparently he comes with the game and there'll be special instructions at the end of the video for how to use him in the game of Nemesis. Okay, now that we've got the cat out of there, these trays are used in the semi-co-op game so that you can put your cards in them and hide them from other players. This little device is called a scanner and I'll show you some cards in a second that have some words written on them that you can't read until you put them in the scanner. The scanner is used to decide to determine if your character is infected or not. Uh, just so you know, bad idea if you get infected. Okay, you have two sets of dice. The two red ones on the bottom are combat dice and the two uh, ten-sided ones on the top, the gray ones, are noise dice and I'll show you how to use those in a little bit. Now the components of this game are amazing, but here's one area where I, hit, I wish they had upgraded the components. These little blue ovals are eggs. They 
They are the intruder eggs. And so I wish they were plastic eggs. I think that would be so much cooler. These five tokens indicate dead crew members. The blue one is the one that you see when you wake up from the hibernatorium. The other four are if your other companions happen to die and you want to lug their bodies around. Everybody cheer. These tokens are for dead intruders that you have killed. These guys are very hard to kill, but once in a while when you get one, you get to put a dead intruder token down and it feels satisfying. Okay, these three sets of tokens are the engines. Now let me show you. Let's check, right? Let's flip those over. That one says it's working. Let's look at this one. Oh, damaged. Let's look at this one. Oh, damaged. That ship is not going anywhere. Okay, so this is part of the setup. You're gonna take those engines and you're gonna put them down like this uh, so that they're face down, right? Ah, uh, face down, and you're gonna have someone just mix them up. Oop, I already saw which one that was. Just totally mix them up, and then engine. Let's see, one, three, two. Let's see how it fits there. Uh, however, it fits doesn't really matter. Uh, engine one again. Now the top one will be. Hmm, we're actually missing an engine. That's okay. It's somewhere, but we'll find it. Oh, it's right over there. I tossed it somewhere. Fun, okay? So during the setup, you will do this, and that's how those engine tokens are used. Now, when your character comes along like this, boom, 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 and comes into the room, he does an action, I'll show you that later, to check whether the engine works or not. Let's check. That one's working, it's fine. He's gonna go over here. Let's check that one. Up, oh, it's working. And he goes to this one. Oh, that one's damaged. Now, the rules are, you gotta understand this, you need two, of three to work. So if this was the case, in fact, after he found out that two were working, he wouldn't even bother checking the other one because you don't need two. I should also say that in a semi-co-op game, the character that comes and looks, looks privately. So you don't have to tell the other players where the engines are working. And that might be information you need to keep to yourself because of your hidden secret objectives. Right here we have the pods. Okay, these are like your escape pods. There's four of them. Now, not all four will be used depending on player count, but we'll get to that later. Let me flip those over though real quick so you can see the other side. That's when they're locked, and the other side was when they were unlocked. And then we'll explain why that's important later. Towards the front of the ship, you'll see two different pod bays. This is the one, this is called B. And now let me show you up here. Right up there is A. That's where the escape pod tokens go. Here we have these tokens. These tokens have the symbols on them and there's a bag that you're gonna put them in and these symbols indicate which different type of intruders there are. And so I'll go over them. Note that there's one blank one. Every time you pull from the bag, you really, really hope to get that blank one. But each one is a different one. This big one right there, see that? It's the one you never want to pull. You can guess who that is. That's the queen. So it's about time we take a look at the miniatures. We take a look at the intruders. We've uh, been hinting about them for long enough. These little guys are the face huggers. They're called larva. They're called larva and you will encounter them on the nemesis. The larva's corresponding token is this little line, that little dash kind of curved line that indicates a larva. Now don't worry if you can't memorize these symbols. There's a handy chart in the rule book and I'll put it up here a little bit later as well so that when you pull them from the bag you can just check on the chart and find out what it is but that little symbol means larva these three intruders are creepers and you can see their corresponding symbol on the bag tokens as well. I should know at this time that I have painted my miniatures. If you buy this game new from retail, they will come gray and unpainted. These eight models are the adults. These are the main ones. These are the aliens that you see in the movie. These are the bad ones. And you can see their corresponding token with the little S, uh, reverse S kind of figure. And that means adult intruder, you'll pull a lot of these, and every time you do, you'll wish you hadn't. These two big, big aliens are what? They're called breeders. I don't see them very often, but once in a while when you do, you will encounter one and they are hard to kill. 
And now the one you've been waiting for, the queen. Let's see if you can get a little close up there. Oh, it's getting blurry. There it is. What a fantastic paint job by yours truly. Yep, the queen. You will see her eventually, and she is a bad, bad monster. Fun to kill though when you rarely get the opportunity. Okay, are you having fun yet? So as I show you these components, we're also kind of quasi setting it up. Now this is the general way I set it up for a two player game, and you'll see that I keep the aliens up there. I have all of the components, the noise, the ammunition, the malfunctioning markers, the fire, the doors, the eggs, and so forth over there. And then I'll keep the bag, as you can see, over there. I have the miniatures in the middle, the engines over there, and the, the uh, escape pods, and then I'll have the, I don't have one here, I forgot to put it, let's grab it, let's be sure, it always starts on the 15, and that always starts on the B. I don't have one on the self-destruct down here in the lower left hand corner, because I don't need it. Right now there is no self-destruct sequence that has gone off. Okay, there's more to look at, but this is the basic setup for up to now, let's move on. One more thing, I want to note that these characters come with these little colored bases. So I have matched the colors to the color boards, and so once I put them on, I just keep them on. But if you're looking at your game going, what are these things for? That's what they're for. All right, now I'm gonna show you one of the coolest parts of the game. It's these tiles. It may be hard to see a little. There's two different tile sets in the games. You'll see them. This one is the one that says two on it and these say one on it. So this is cool. These are the rooms in the ship, but because you woke up with brain fog, you don't remember the layout. So this is how they do it. They have these pieces and if you'll flip them over, you'll see the rooms. In fact, there's the nest. Uh-oh, uh-oh, right? Okay, so the one, what are the difference you're asking? I get it. The one tiles are in every single game, so they are standard tiles that have to be there. The two tiles, however, are a random mix of different ones, and so they will uh, be in the game, some games, and not in others. Now what makes that really cool is that the, the layout of the ship is always different, so it's always a new adventure. So what do you do with these things? Well, you look at the main board, I think you can see this here, right? See that two right there? That, when you set up the game, is you would put a two there. Now you go over here, that's a one, right? So randomly you would put a one there, and then you can kind of come up here, you can see that that's a one, and that's a two, and so forth. So you lay out the board that way, randomly, every time, and it's a really cool mechanic, because my friends, the ship layout is different every time, and some of the rooms are different as well. Okay, now we have these little hexes. These are called exploration markers. Now I'm gonna back out a little here, and you can see this, the thing has been set up with all these hexes on them. The ones are on the ones, the twos are on the twos, and there's some extra twos that have been put back in the box. Now what you do with these exploration tokens is you put them one each on all of the room tokens. extra ones, they just go back in the box. All right, now we're gonna show you the player boards. There's the pilot, she's green, there's the mechanic, there's a soldier, the scout, the captain, and the scientist. And each one of these characters are available for you to play, and each one has different characteristics and different abilities. However, each card is exactly the same. The different abilities show up in a deck of cards, action cards that you get, which I'm gonna show you in a second. All right, so this is the back of the character boards, so you know what you're looking at when you see them. And here is the front of two of them. In this case, this is the captain and the mechanic. Now, like I said before, they're all the same. So let's go over it really quickly. To the left, you'll see action cards deck. That's where you place your action card deck. It'll be off the screen, obviously. And the action cards discard are to the right. Most people end up figuring out where they wanna put them. They just end up left and right. They, they get kind of messy, but basically, put them on the left and the right, you'll be fine. Down below, you see a left hand, and down below, a right hand. 
So that's where you'll carry your stuff. There's a picture of your miniature so you know which one is the captain. Okay, to the left are your basic actions. We're going to go over those a little bit more later, but each one of those costs one card from your hand. That's all you have to know. And if you move very carefully, which is a good idea sometimes because you want to be more quiet, you're going to take two cards. Okay, now to the right, you'll see a few symbols. One is the signal. So those little clear orbs, you would put that on there if the captain has sent the signal, which is important for some of the story objectives. If you are slimed, you put one there. If you have one light wound, if you have two light wounds, and then that moves down into a serious wound. So every card is the same. Now, as I mentioned before, don't forget, I'll show you very shortly here, every character has a deck of 10 cards that enable it to be to take actions, but those cards, for many of them, are very, very unique and will give the captain a totally different flavor than the mechanic. Here's a quick shot of the scientist and the pilot. Again, the character boards are the same, but I just thought I would show them to you. And here are the last two characters, the scout and the soldier. All right, we're getting closer and closer to killing aliens, folks. We're gonna get into it pretty soon, but there's some more components that we have to look at. And so let's do it, let's do it quick. We've got some cards in the upper right hand corner here and you'll see them with this back. So they are art prototype cards. Don't need them, don't need them in the game, but they're fun. This green deck is the intruder action player deck. So there's a variant of the game where if you die first, you get to become the aliens and you get to play against your friends. We're not gonna look at that in this game. This is a series of character draft cards. Each one of the characters there, there's the pilot, the scout, and so forth. That's if you wanna draft your characters. There's a variant in the game that allows you to just, to draft your character randomly as opposed to choosing them. Okay, these are your solo objective cards. So if you're playing solo or co-op, you're playing together as a team, these are the objectives. You would deal one out to each player. Here are your objective cards for the semi-co-op version. And you can see that there are personal ones. See the personal? And over there's the corporate. You'll get one of each. And at a certain point in the game, when the first intruder arrives on the board, you have to make a decision one way or the other. All right, so I want you to look below. Here we have the action deck. See these action decks? Every character has a 10 card action deck, and this is how you'll take actions, and I'll show you how to do that pretty shortly. But this is the one for the scout, and this is the one for the soldier, and so on. So what these cards do is they give an individual feel to each character. You have different powers that a scout can do, that a soldier can do, captain can do. Then there's the combined, the powers that are similar that everyone can do. So each set of cards will have cards just for the scout and general ones like search, which everyone has. Everyone will have a 10 card deck. Now above that, you'll see these smaller little cards and each character has three cards. The first is this one, which is upright, and that is the starting item. Everyone has a starting weapon. So what does the scout have here? Can you see that? It's a rifle, it's an energy weapon, it has four ammo, and it is heavy. The soldier has a starting item, an assault rifle, it's an energy weapon, has five ammo, has some wording on it, and so forth. Now you'll also notice that each character has two of these cards two of these cards that have a horizontal value to them. And what these are, are individual quest items that your character and only your character can get. And so let's take a, an example of this. It's kind of a fun piece of the game. The, uh, the soldier can get a, get a quest item of an auto loader. Activate this item in the armory room. So for one card, one action, if he finds the armory room, boom, he can turn this over and add assault rifle auto loader to his equipment. So his other one says quest item armor. Discard tools or duct tape to activate this item and boom, you get armor. Okay, every character will have their unique items. It makes it really fun. You've got these side little things that only you can do. Okay, those intruders are getting closer. It's about time, it's about time, but we gotta look at a few more cards here. You'll see these cards have the exact same back as the action cards that we showed you over here. Now, why is that? Well, you can probably guess. They're contamination cards, so certain 
problems in this game, including getting hit by the bad guys, can contaminate you. And as I explained before, that writing, you can't read it, but there's a reader that you can put it in and you can find out if you're infected. So far, it seems like it's about 50-50 for the cards that are infected and some aren't. Okay, these are event cards. At the end of the intruder turn, every game, you're gonna flip one of these and I think you can guess bad stuff's gonna happen. This is the intruder attack deck. So when it attacks you, you flip one of these cards and we'll show you the rules on how that works. Serious wounds, yep, you can get seriously wounded. If you remember, I showed you on the card that you can get a light wound, a light wound, and then a serious wound. So two light wounds, the third light wound turns into a serious wound. You can have three of these three of these. The fourth one, boom, you're dead. So just so you know that. Also, the rules are that each one of these serious wounds affects a certain part of your body. So you get more and more injured and more encumbered. Okay. This is the intruder weakness deck. I didn't show it to you yet, but here it is. The intruders have their own board. You put five eggs on the nest. I'll show you that in a little bit. And then there are three intruder weaknesses that you can investigate and they are always random. And so you pull them from this deck and you'll put them here, here, and here. And the way that it works, I'll just show you real quick, is the character corpse. If you take the character corpse to the lab, that means any character corpse, so character dies, or that blue corpse that you start with, your buddy who's dead when you wake up. If you take that to the lab and you work in the lab, you can investigate a weakness. If you take an intruder egg, which is in the nest, remember we showed you that? You can do that, and if you kill an intruder and take that, to the lab, all of them go to the lab and all of them will reveal weakness. Once you reveal the weaknesses, these weaknesses will give you advantages in the game against the aliens or intruders. These are the coordinate cards. There's a random deck of coordinates. They're all the same, I mean on the top. And then in the back, it tells you which area is which. So I told you up here that the game always starts on B. Remember, it's always headed to B. Well, this deck is what you shuffle randomly and you place right there. We'll show you that in the setup, right there. And then when your character gets up to the bridge, he investigates, and in this case, we would look at it, and where is B going? Okay, so B is going to deep space. See that? That means we're going the wrong direction. So we'd have to change it. And if we want to go to Earth, we'd have to change it by moving that clear marker, marker over to D. So that's what these are for. Okay, we're almost done. We're getting there. We're getting there. Dang, this is exciting. Okay, there's a few more cards. Items, items, items. You want to separate those. The yellow ones are mechanical items. The red ones, you know what those are. Those are weapons and armor. And the green ones are health items. So when you go out through the game, I showed you a search card earlier, you'll search in various rooms and you'll get an opportunity to find these items. Now the way the game works, I'll just tell you right now, is you always draw two, and then you pick one and you put it back. So, so that gives you a lot, of th a lot of options. Okay, so what are these craft items? What are these craft items? Well, I didn't tell you about them yet because I don't want to overcomplicate you, but your character board does show crafting. So crafting is an ability each character has. It's always the same, but you can take two types of cards. In this case, this type and this type, and those types are shown on the card. So that card you can see has a I don't know, it looks like a needle, right? And so down here, the, the taser and the flamethrower use that needle card and another card. So you can take two cards and put them together and then you get the card here. And the four items you can get are an antidote, a taser, a flamethrower, and a Molotov cocktail. So that's kind of the idea that you're heading through this spaceship and you're just grabbing one thing and you're grabbing another and you're combining them and you are about to die and you use it to create a flamethrower and you live. Get it? It's a very cinematic and it's very fun. And that wraps up our look at the components. All right, it is time to set up. You ready? Okay, get your board out with me. You just come along with me. First thing you wanna do is get those three arrows up. You see what I'm talking about? right up there. Wow, let's get that right there. See him? Okay, now later you may wanna end up setting this up to suit you, but for this tutorial, let's all do it together. So let's put the bridge to the front and the engines to the back. So you get your engine tiles. 
It's almost the first thing I always do. You shuffle them and you put them there. Engines one, two, and three. You get your little clear token, you put it on the 15, you put your other one on the B. You put the other clear token here in the B. You get your coordinate cards. Go find your coordinate cards, which you went through them, shuffle them and put one there, and then take these and put them back in the box. Okay, then you're gonna get all of your tiles. You're gonna get all of your tiles, you're gonna shuffle them, and you're gonna put them on the board. The ones go on the ones, the twos go on the twos. There will be some twos left over, you put those back in the box. Then you take your exploration tokens, these ones with the question mark, and you put one on each room, just like that, and you will be ready with the board. Oh, then you take your escape pods and according to the number of players as described in the setup book right here, for one to two players, you have two escape pods. And so you'll have escape pod one over on A and escape pod two over on B and they start locked. We are gonna do a two player game. We're gonna show you a two player game. So you take your soldier piece here and your captain. Those are the ones we're gonna use. You find the action decks with the soldier cards. You shuffle those, you put them to the left. You do the same, the 10 captain cards, you put them there. You also put the, the captain's weapon and his two things, his two quest cards and the soldier's weapon and their two quest cards. Next, you're gonna get the red cubes and you're gonna put them on this for the number of ammo. And the captain starts with a six shooter, six of them. And the soldier starts with a assault rifle and he has five ammo. Then I put down the intruder board, I put five eggs and I shuffle the intruder weakness deck and I put three weakness cards down. Now you can set up the rest of the board the way you want, but I usually put the intruders at the top, I put the noise markers over there, I've got my doors you can see, I have my red ammo and damage tokens, I have my fire and mechanical tokens, I have my clear status markers, I have some other tokens of various sorts. Then over here to the right, I have the various other cards, the serious wounds, the events, the intruder attacks, the contamination cards, the objectives, which we'll put in the box in a minute, and then the item cards, green, red, yellow, and the crafting items below. We are gonna play a two-player cooperative game. So I'm gonna get my solo cards out, I'm gonna shuffle those, and I'm gonna give one to each player, which we'll take a look at a little bit later, and then we'll return the rest to the box. Next, we're gonna build the bag. Now on page six of the rule book under game setup, it'll tell you how to do this, but I'll run through it for you shortly. You start with one blank, you start with four larva, one creeper, the queen, and three adults, plus plus one adult per character. We're playing a two player game. So there's two more, and then you just take all of those, and you're gonna put them in the bag, and I will show you how that works a little bit later, but suffice to say, you want to randomize that. And you also keep the rest of the tokens to the stack nearby. All right, now as I mentioned before, there is a system in the rule book on page eight for character drafting so that you can get a randomized character. I personally just choose my characters, it's the way I like to do it. And so in this co-op mode, we've chosen the soldier and the captain, and that's how we're gonna run through this playthrough with you. So we're also gonna find the cat token, see this? This is the cat in space, and this is the first player marker, which we'll give to the captain and he will start us off. And the final thing we need to do for the setup is to take the captain miniature and the soldier miniature and the blue dead character corpse token and put them in the hibernatorium where the game will start. All right, here we go. I'm gonna teach you to play by playing which is the best way. So you just imagine you're sitting here with me, and as we told you already, in the setup we have the captain and the soldier. So this is the way it starts. The two characters starts in the hibernatorium, they've woken up, the alarms are going off, and there is a dead 
body. We've given the captain the first player token, so this is how it starts. The first thing you do is you shuffle your deck and you pull five action cards. Five action cards. Actually, the first thing you do, let's be real, is look at our solo co-op objective. This one says, no man left behind. So, my objective is to send the signal and all rooms on the ship must be explored. That sucks. Why does that suck? Because there's a lot of rooms and the more you explore, the more danger there is. But in order for me to win, to recap, we have to make sure the engines are working, two of the three engines are working, we have to make sure the ship is headed to Earth, and I have to send the signal, which means I have to find the comms room. Okay, there's one of these rooms is a comms room. The first time you play it, you don't know that, but I'm telling you, one of these rooms will help you send the signal and all rooms must be explored. So guess what? That kind of sucks, but it's what we got. Now let's look at the soldiers card and he has cleanup crew, send the signal. So that's good, we both have the same one. Now in this game, so you understand when you play it, if one person has to send the signal, then that person can do it for the other person. So the signal just must be sent, okay? The other thing is, and the nest must have been destroyed. Or we have a choice. Or we can send the signal, so both times you have to send the signal, and the ship must have been destroyed. So, for some reason, this guy, after, for him to survive and win, the soldier, he has to get him and the captain into the pod bays, uh, the escape pods and jettison them and then make sure the ship is destroyed. So that's a pretty that's a pretty gnarly one. Uh, unfortunately, the captain just has to send the signal and all rooms must be explored. So since it's co-op, we could sit together and we could decide which one we wanted to do. So our choices are simple. Both of us, the signal must be sent and then the other one is then we explore all rooms and destroy the nest, or we explore all rooms and destroy the ship and escape and escape pods. So which one are we gonna do? I don't know, I can't tell you yet. I'm just not sure. Okay, back to how the game starts. Now this is how it plays. You drive your, draw your five cards, and these cards are your actions. Now the cost of your actions are right here. The basic actions are movement, shoot, melee attack, pick up heavy object, trade, and craft item. What that means is you have to spend one of your cards. In this way, when you spend a card, you just take the card and you put it into your discard. It doesn't matter what the card says. It doesn't matter what the card says for these basic actions. One move, so if we wanna move, we would just spend one card and we move. Now. If we want careful movement, we want to move more silently. I'll show you how that works when we have to, we'd spend two cards. Okay, now what other things can we do? Well, we can look at our cards. and our cards have abilities as well. So, just so you know, uh, there's 10 of them, but we're only gonna look at five right here. And so what we have is a rest card, okay? And that lets us scan any contamination cards we have on it, and it's got some rules, right? We also have a search card. Now there's nothing to search in this room, so we don't want to use that there. We also have another search card, and then we have a reload. Add one ammo to your six shooter. Okay, so it comes with six ammo, and every time we do that, we can add one. So that's kind of a nice thing. The next ability we have is the demolition card. Destroy one closed door in a, in a corridor in a corridor connected to the room you are in or place a malfunction marker in the room you are in. Now, you may ask yourself at this point, why would I place a malfunction marker? Why would I hurt a room? Well, the reason would be is if we were playing semi-co-op and I had a corporate or a personal reason to hurt the ship. We are playing co-op, so just so you know, when we come to weird little abilities like that, I'll point them out to you and they won't make any sense. So if you're playing along with me, you can either take randomly your five cards or take the same five cards, right? Now here's the strategy in the game. When it comes to these basic actions, I have to use one of these cards. So I might wanna use a card that I don't think I'm gonna use. So for instance, I might choose reload, 
I might choose reload for my first action because I don't think I need to reload yet. Okay, so let's do it. Let's get the game going. Let's have the captain head to the bridge and let's have the soldier, this is just some tactical planning, head back to the engines. That's what we're gonna do. Now, the way it works is that each player gets two actions, then it passes to the next player. He gets two actions, passes back, passes back and forth until everyone is done. Now, obviously I only have five cards, so I can only take five actions and we'll see how it works. So you're ready to go? I hope you're with me. Let's go to this room. Let's go to this room. So what do we need to do? We need to move. What's that gonna cost us? One card, it's that simple. Now we have to make a choice. Like I said already, I'm gonna use the reload card. Now I'm not doing the reload action here. It's very important that you understand that. The way the game works is I just discard that card. That's a blank card, I'm not reloading. I'm using that card for the basic action of movement. So this is how it goes. I come down to this tile. So you come to this place, you flip the card, and we have found the hatch, okay? And then we flip this, which is the action token, and it tells us that there are three, I'm gonna show this to you, there are three items in the room. That's what the three means, and then those claw sounds, I'm gonna explain what that means in a second. So there's always an arrow on these rooms. If you look at each of these room blanks underneath, there's an arrow. And what that means is, is that you rotate the room to the number of searchable items that are in there, which we just found by looking at this token, three, three. So there's three searchable items in the room. And then we'll show what that means next. Now this room has three colors on it. Do you see the red, the green, and the uh, yellow? What that means is in the hatch, we can search for any of the three items we want. I've got that card upside down, so we'll turn it around. All right, so the other thing that happened was these claw marks, okay? What that means is, normally when we'd walk into this room, we'd search, we'd roll for noise. That's what normally happens. Unfortunately, we got these claw marks. So what those claw marks mean is that there's noise everywhere. Noise is everywhere, and so this is how you show that. You go to the rooms, and you go three. You put these noise markers in corridor three, every room around you, corridor one, corridor four, and you'll see in a little bit what that may mean, because that's bad. That's really bad. The next time we hear noise in any one of these corridors, that means we're gonna get surprise attacked. Okay. So we've snuck down here. Unfortunately, we're hearing a lot of noise or we're making a lot of noise. One of the two. Okay, so, so now what do we do? Well, we have two actions, if you remember, and the captain is going to search. Now, luckily, he has two search cards. So he's gonna search. Now, what do you think we should search for? Should we search for some healing items? Should we search for some weapons? Or we should search for some mechanical items? I think weapons, just because that's what I want to do. And boom, what do I get? I get an energy weapon, which is a prototype shotgun. Now the reason the shotgun's kind of cool is because it does a little bit more damage sometimes when you hit. The next one I get is a prototype energy weapon, a rifle. A rifle has six ammo, which is better than the two. And every time you roll a double shot, you can discard one additional ammo to deal one additional enemy. Um, injury and this one says you always deal at least one injury when you attack except on a blank if you roll a one or a two you deal an additional one and we can only choose one so which one are we going to go for i'm going to go for the big shotgun okay i'm going to go for the big shotgun and then what i do is i take that card and I put it back underneath so that's how you do it take that and i'll put it in my left hand it's a heavy item and i put it in my left hand now don't forget I have two quest items. One is an intercom. Discard the tools and duct tape to activate this item, which will all characters in a room with a computer may additionally be targeted by your order or motivation. Order can only affect a single character. So what's that? You might be confused going, what does that mean? The first time through, it's okay. You'll find I have an action card that lets me give orders to people. And that's what it means. So especially useful 
in a multiplayer game when we're against each other. In this game, it probably won't be as useful and I probably won't actually go and get that intercom. The other one is a log key. Activate this item in the comms room. So the comms room might be the same room where we send the signal. It might be, I can't remember for sure, we'll find out. Activate this ID in the comms room and it's a log key. Use in a room with a computer, choose a player, look at one of their objective cards. Okay, so both of these are kind of useful in a co-op, in a semi-co-op game and not in a co-op game, which means I'll probably just ignore those and not even bother to make them. Okay, but you, if you're playing semi-co-op against your friends and you might have to want to hurt them in some way, I don't know why you do that, but if you do, you might need to use those. All right, so we've used our two abilities. We've used search and we have used the reload card to move and now we're gonna say our turn's over. Now we're gonna to go to the soldier. He also has to draw five cards, which we've shuffled, and now let's go over his cards. Full auto, demolition, which is the same as the other one had, interruption, so this enables you to cancel an action someone else is doing, covering fire, which is kind of nice, you use that to get out of the room, and arrest card, which you saw uh, our captain had. So some of them are, are going to be the same. So we gotta go this way, right? So what could we use? What card do we not need right now? Well, we just don't need to rest. So we use that rest as the movement card. Oh, before we do that, I'm gonna show you a trick. Uh, let's pick this guy up. Should we pick him up? The reason we wanna pick him up is we can take him to the lab and then when we search in the lab, so you don't know this in the first time you play this, you search in the lab, you can find a weakness. Do you wanna do that? Let's do it. So. We have to pick them up. So pick up a heavy object. So we use that rest card to pick up a heavy object. And now we have our dead buddy. We're hauling our dead buddy around. Pretty gruesome, okay? Now, the interruption says, discard this card to cancel any action performed by another player, right? Which is one of those cards to stop someone from hurting you. So we're not gonna use that either. So we use that to move and we'll come up here. So this is the process. First thing you do is you flip the room. We have found the canteen, which is a pretty mild room. We flip this card and it says there's a one. Remember what we do is we find the red arrow. There is the red arrow. And that means there's one searchable item in this room. Now you're giving away the room is a green, which means there's only gonna be green cards in it. Okay, now what's that other symbol? You'll see the door. You'll see the door on that. And what that means is something malfunctions and the room gets blocked behind me. It means I can't go back. Boom! Pretty scary, huh? Pretty scary, I can't go back. Unless I find a card which lets me destroy a door. Guess what, I have one, demolition. So I could destroy that door if I needed to. But I've taken my two actions. One, I picked up my dead body. I'm hauling him around, right? And two, I'm in the canteen. So that's my turn, and now it flips back to the captain. Now I've only got three cards, but what can I do? Got to be a little careful. Now, since I pulled both of my search cards and my first five cards, I'm just going to search again. So the first action I do is I use the search card. It costs zero cards, which means I just use the search card. And let's get some healing. We've got some pretty good weapons. We've got some pretty good weapons. And now let's flip these over. Okay, I've got a med kit and I got some alcohol. Definitely taking the alcohol, right? You use the alcohol to scan and remove one contamination card from your hand. If it was infected, you take another contamination card. So that's not really, I mean, it lets you know if your contamination is bad and infected, and, and, but if it is, it's not good for you. The other is use a med kit, okay? You, one use only, dress a serious wound or heal one dressed serious wound. We're gonna take the med kit. We're gonna take the med kit in case somebody gets injured, which probably won't happen. I mean, this is a pretty easy game. Nobody ever gets hurt. I'm being sarcastic. All right, all right, so I've searched. Now it's time to move on. And we gotta head this way, right? It's pretty obvious we gotta head up there. So what do we wanna discard to move? Well, we don't need to rest, but we might wanna keep our demolition in case, in case a door pops up just like it did for there. So we come down this corridor and we flip the room. Remember these are Random. Well, there you go. Boom shakalaka. We've got the nest. How fun. We're already there and we go into the nest and what? We have to flip this room. Now this car, this room doesn't have any effect because there's no doors or nothing in there. So we just discard that action, um, that token this time. 
and we have found the nest. So this is the nest, and guess what? There's five eggs in this room with us. Creepy, creepy, we have entered the nest. Now, there's one more thing we need to do that we didn't do the last time because remember that token had the claws on it, which meant noise in all corridors? Well, this time and every further time, we roll a 10-sided dice, which has the numbers one through four on it. One, two, well, one, two, three, and I'll explain what that red dot means in a second, and four, so we'll find out, okay? This is where we put a noise marker. The noise gets louder and louder and louder until one day, boom, bad guys show up. You ready? We rolled a three. So what that means is that there's noise in the service corridor. These red dots mean service corridors. And to show that in the game, there's this mark up here. See that? And so we put noise in the service corridor. So now we have noise behind us in the one, and we have noise in the service corridor. Now we've taken two actions, one we searched, remember, and one we moved. So we're done. Now we still have one card, so that means we'll get another turn. Okay, now we go to the soldier. He was headed this way, remember? Now he doesn't have a search card. It's interesting, right? That's the way this game works. You have to, you have to, there's a little bit random luck. So even though a normal character would just search, uh, I can't. I have to have the search card to do it. And that's just the way that the game is designed. So, but I still can move, right? It's time to move. And we gotta get back to these engines, right? So we gotta risk it. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do a noise roll for that room, didn't I? I did. So let's go ahead and do it. We gotta do it. Uh-oh, the claws. You know what the claws mean? It's noise in every corridor. So you just gotta endure me reaching over here. So that means there's noise back in the four, there's noise in the one ahead, there's noise in the three, and there's noise in the service corridor. So that means there was noise there. We kind of goofed the game a little. So what we'll do is we'll just pretend that didn't happen, but it would have triggered an intruder attack. You know what, let's just do it. Let's not, let's not give ourselves an out here, right? Let's just start it off with, before we take our action, boom. Boom, we get attacked. And we'll do it to the soldier, even though it would have technically be done to that. Excuse me, I just hit the camera. So technically it would have been the captain, but you know, you're gonna make mistakes in your game. So you gotta roll with it. You just gotta roll with it. It's okay to roll with it. And this is how we roll. So now we're just gonna give him one. So how do you do that? You go and you find the intruder attack deck, okay? Which is the red deck here and you flip it over. That is not how you do it. Let's do this over. Okay, how do you do it? You go to the nemesis bag. This is it, you ready? Oh, you just shuffle them up and we're hoping for a blank. We are hoping for a blank. And we got an adult, we did not get a blank. So every time you pull from the bag, you take all of the noise markers that were there and you get rid of them, okay? So they kind of clear out, of course you're gonna get a bad guy. Now remember that would have been the captain, but we got a goof, so you got to roll with it, and you got to learn to roll with it when you make mistakes in the game. There's no no problem with making the mistakes. So what you do is we pulled a where did it go? Oh, this guy. It's an adult. Okay. And now here's something interesting you do. You flip it over, and the number is four. Okay. So let me tell you what that means. So we have an adult. He shows up in the canteen with me. The first intruder has hit the game. If we were playing semi-co-op, we'd have to choose between our objectives, our company and our personal objectives. Since we're just playing co-op, we're all friends here. We're all friends. Our no man left behind, remember? Then we don't have to do that. So this guy shows up. So what does the four mean? You're asking me, what does that four mean? Well, how many cards do I have? I have three. Do I have four cards? I don't. I have three cards. So that means I have under that number, which means in the rules, that means I got surprise attacked. So I'm just dinking along in the canteen, looking around. I can't search it, so I don't know what I'm doing, but whatever it is, I wasn't paying attention. And out of one of the, you know, the little lockers or the refrigerator, I open the refrigerator and what jumps out? Boom! So how do you do that? This is what an intruder attack deck does. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna flip it over. So this is what it means. The blood doesn't mean anything right now up in the left-hand corner. 
it's a byte. And what it tells you is that these three types, and what the type that we pulled was an adult, so that means the adult will bite. So if you had a creature that wasn't one of those types, it didn't attack you, it would have been nice. So here's the bite. If the character has two serious wounds, they die. I don't have any serious wounds. If not, they suffer one serious wound. So this guy bites my butt. Bad, not good, not good. I have to pull a serious wound. We should shuffle these, I think I looked at those earlier. And boom, I have one serious wound. My body, draw up to four action cards instead of five. So already I am going to be screwed in the future. And this is for him, not for, not for him, right? This is for the soldier. So he has got a serious body wound just to start things off. All right, so what do we do? How do we respond in times of danger? Things are not looking good. Now, I'm gonna tell you, this game is never nice. Never. So this is kind of normal. What are we gonna do? Well, I've got covering farm fire. I can discard one ammo and I and one other chosen character within your room may escape the room without triggering an intruder attack. So if I leave this room, this guy gets another attack on me. But not today. Not today! because I am a Marine and I know how to cover. So I fire my gun, red token, I set it aside and I get out of dodge. Which way should I go? Now remember, we have to figure, we have to clean, we have to go to every single room. So it really doesn't matter, we're just gonna have to work them anyways. So we get out, he doesn't get a surprise, he doesn't get an attack as I leave and that's just the way it is because I use my covering fire. I use my covering fire to scour one and I move and you and your other chosen, chosen character, there's no one else within me, may escape the room moving, to, moving without triggering an intruder attack. So what we're doing is gonna go up here. Okay, and we flip that over and we have found the surgery. Surgery turns out to be a pretty good room in case you have, you're infected. And then you get on the table and they cut it out of you. It's pretty gruesome. Okay, and now we have to do our normal. We flip it over, and what does that tell us? It tells us a two. See the two? We find the arrow, there's the arrow, and it's already on the two, so that means there's two searchable items on this one. What else is there? There's a mechanical, broken mechanic thing. So we reach over there, good thing I got long arms, and we put it in there. What does that tell us? The surgery doesn't work. It doesn't work, so if I needed to cut an alien out of my stomach, I couldn't do it until I repaired that. So I am there. Now what else do I do? This is the one you don't ever wanna forget. You gotta do a noise roll, right? And I got a one. So that means there's noise down corridor one. Corridor one. All right, so I left. That was the one thing I did. Now I have another, uh, two other things. Here's my action deck, I better not get those uh, Let's see, what should we do? You know what? I'm gonna move again. I'm gonna move again. So I move there, and now, boom, I move into the engine room. This engine room. Why am I moving there instead of that one? Well, because there's a sound that, thing there, and I just don't wanna get attacked again. So, noise roll. Oops, that was caught. <laughs> caught again, let's do it again. Uh-oh, noise in every core. So I'm rolling terribly. Fours and one and twos, okay? Now, there's nothing to search in this room, but there are engines, but we'll wait till I get back there to check that room and I'll show you how that works. Back to the captain, back to the captain, who, thanks to my poor play, avoided getting attacked because he would have been the one to get attacked instead of this guy. Okay, what card do we have left? Back to us. Remember, we can take two actions per turn, but we only have one card. So that probably means we're only gonna take one action. And that's exactly what that means. And what are we gonna do? We have the demolition card. Well, there's no need to do any demolition, but what we can do is get to the bridge with movement. Remember, our basic actions each cost one card. So we use that card and now, boom, we take off and we've made it to the bridge on the first turn. That's awesome. Except for we do have to make a noise roll. And here we go. And we got an X. That's good. That means we didn't make any noise. That means our captain is silent, like a mouse. All right, so he's made it there, but he doesn't have anything more he can do. So what does he do? He passes, he has to pass. There's absolutely nothing for him to do because he has no more actions. Okay, 
Back to our soldier. Our soldier is got to the engine room. And the first thing he's gonna do is try to check those engines. Now, how do you do that? Well, luckily, one piece I didn't show you in the setup are these cool cards, okay? They're not cards, they're big, big pieces of uh, paper. They're a little bit thicker, so they're kind of poster board, but not totally thick. And they have the rooms for the additional rooms. So what you wanna do is you wanna look for the special rooms. There's the engine. So to check the engine takes two cards. Two cards to check the engine. Two, two cards. Well, guess what? We only have one. So we can't do anything. We can't do anything this turn. If we want, we could leave. We still have the ability to run out into a different room if we want, but then we wouldn't check the engine. We need to check that engine, folks. We need to. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to pass. Okay, the captain has passed, the soldier has passed, and we have completed one round of our game. Now, it goes over to the intruders. Now, I never, it's very hard for me to memorize this, so I'm gonna tell you on the back of the rules, in the rules summary is the round order, okay? And so I really, really almost always come back and look at this, so let's do it. Now we go to the event phase, which means the intruder phase. So I'll go over this with you. First, move the time marker on the time track down. Boom, that's how we do that. If the self-destruct sequence had started, we'd move that too. Thankfully, it has not. Number two, it's actually six. I wish they'd number this differently, but they say intruder attack. Now, no one, no intruder is in a room with me. So no intruders attack anyone. If you were with one, he would attack. You'd pull your intruder attack card as we have shown before. Number three, three or seven, let's just all use my numbering. The third thing you do is intruder fire damage. If there was fire in any room and an intruder was in a room that was on fire, the intruder would take damage. There's no fire, so there's no damage. Number four, resolve an event card. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ready? We're gonna take that card, boom. What do we get? Noise in technical corridors. Place a noise marker in the technical corridor, super. Luckily that just got cleared because that technical corridor is probably where this guy jumped out of. I said it was in a refrigerator. I should have just obviously used the analogy of coming out of the technical corridors. If there isn't already one there, if there is, each character in a room with a technical corridor entrance performs a noise roll. Since there wasn't, we hear noise. And that event, let me tell you folks, that event is pretty light. That's pretty light. We can live with that one. Okay, so when you resolve an event card, first thing is intruder movement. So I forgot to do that. So in order to give you the sense that things are moving and these guys are moving and they, they, they do things randomly, every time you get to the event, all the intruders on the board will move. In this case, how you read it is you look at the symbols. So we already know we have an adult because that's our adult symbol, remember that? And we move down corridor four. So all you do is just look. Now it turns out that corridor four is blocked. So this is the way the rules work, okay? I'm going to take time to suggest that I don't like this rule because it doesn't make any sense. I would just normally say the room, the door is blocked, the door is blocked, and the guy doesn't move down that corridor. He tries and comes back. But that's not the rule. If we're playing by the rules, that door gets broken, okay? And he stays there. He stays there, but the door gets broken. It's just the rules. Don't know why it would happen that way. I, I think it's probably a design feature that we couldn't put up doors all around here and protect ourselves from, um, from intruders. Eventually they're gonna get broken down. Okay, so that's the event. The guy moves and then we do the event power and now we, we discard that card. Now what's left? Intruder bag development, okay. This is a weird little rule, but you'll get used to it. You'll get used to it. This is the final thing we do per turn, is you're gonna to go to the flow of the game page, page 10. You will have to reference this each time you play it. And what you do, stick with me, is you pull a random card. Okay, we pull an adult. Okay, that doesn't mean an adult shows up. It means something different. So we have to look on page 10 and we go to the adult entry and this is what it says. It says, 
All players roll for noise in turn order. If a player character is in combat with an intruder, this player does not perform a noise roll. Then we return the adult intruder token back to the bag. So we'll just take that back and we'll put it back already. Okay, and now we all do a noise roll. Since I was the first player, I go first and I am the captain, so I make a noise roll. He gets a two. You know how this works. You put your noise marker in corridor two. In this case, it's one and two. There you go. Now this guy makes a noise roll. I wanna show you something here. Unless I get the X, which means no noise, I already know I'm gonna get some noise, right? Because corridor one and two here has noise and three and four has noise. And if I ever get two noises, boom, I'm screwed. So here we go. Okay, what I did was get noise in both. It doesn't matter because they both clear. Every time you get noise, a double noise in the quarter, you clear them all first. Then you go like this. You take your random thing. What do we get? We got an adult. Bad news. An adult shows up. We flip it over. And guess what? If we have three or more cards, we're not surprised at that. How many cards do I have? I saved one, remember? And I could have discarded this if, if I wanted to draw five new ones, but I wanted to keep it because it's full auto. So guess what? The soldier gets surprise attacked again. Oh no, here we go. Ready, flip it over. Transformation. So what that says is only, only the attack only works for creepers, okay? Creepers, there's no creepers on the board. So guess what? Nothing happens, nothing happens. And so the first round of the game is over. All right, should we move to round two? Guess what, Cat. Cat moves over to the soldier. The soldier becomes the first player. He's gonna pull five cards. Here's his other five cards. He's got a search, a search, so basic repairs, a taking aim, and nerves of steel. Now, let's take stock of where we are. Unfortunately, I don't know, we, have, we don't have our covering fire. We obviously don't wanna search here. Basic repairs uh, fixes an engine. If the engine's broken, we can fix it, but here's the problem. Here's the problem. Taking aim, perform a shoot action with your energy weapon. You can reroll your first result on the combat die. Do we wanna do some combat? Nerves of steel, discard this card during a surprise attack to ignore effect. Wow, that's nice, that's a defensive card. All right, uh, but we've already been surprised. So what we're gonna do is we've gotta find out if that engine's working, even with this, this bastard with us. It's gonna cost us two cards. It's two cards, right? So here we go. Which cards should we get rid of? Well, we don't wanna do the basic repairs because we might need that. Our nerves of steel, we're not gonna need that because hopefully we're not gonna get surprised. You know what, just in case. Taking aim, oh, none of this is good. Well, we can't search, so screw it. Let's discard the search, and we have to do two. Oh, two cards, right? Yep, engine number one and two, they're both the same, two cards. Okay, that's our action, two, we check the, the engine. This is what we do, is we look over the top, boom, it's working, we don't have to repair it. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. Which way should we go? Man, the more I think about it, I should have gone this way, that way I could have. So now I've gotta go here, and if, this isn't working, I can fix it with my repair card. Okay, I'm thinking. Let's get the hell out of here. So let me show you how to do this. This is pretty cool. Let's do taking aim. We're not gonna shoot, we're leaving, right? So we take off, boom. Now, as we leave, they get an attack on us. So here we go. I've already got one serious one. Oh, I have a body, I only get four cards, remember? Well, let's get rid of one of these. Let's get rid of nerves of steel. Well, that would be back there. Wouldn't have come up. Okay, see, you gotta roll with the rules, making, making mistakes. Okay, so who attacks? You can see that, the queen or the breeders. Neither of those attack, so we're lucky. Doesn't attack. Good for us, good for us. So we get out of there and that monster leaves us alone. Now what we have to do is we have to flip this card. This is the generator, okay? Uh, initiate stop the self-destruct sequence, which we're not gonna do. Right, and then boom, it says three, 
So we know how to do this again. Where's the arrow? And we get to three and it's yellow, so that means it's gonna be mechanical cards. And there's a door behind us. Uh, we're not too worried about the door. It actually kind of stops that guy from coming into us, okay? So those are the two items. One, we worked, check the engines. Two, we got the hell out of Dodge. All right, now it goes over to the captain. Remember the captain can have five cards, not four, because he wasn't wounded, though he should have been the one who was wounded. Okay, so he's up here. So he's in the cockpit or the bridge, and it costs two. Two to check the co coordinates or set the destination. So we want to be going to Earth, right? We know that. So we got to spend two cards. Let's look at our cards. We have basic repairs. We have interruption. We have suppressive fire. That's a nice one. Motivation. All characters in the room you are in, including yourself, draw an action card. Uh, and order. That is pretty cool. Like if we activate this idea in the comms room, remember then we can send orders to anyone in the computer room. He's got a computer in his room, that little blue piece there tells us the computer. So we might think about getting that log key quest. Um, we'd have to find the comms room anyways. And then we could give him an order. And what we could do is spend a card to give him an extra card. Not sure why we would do that. We're just thinking, we're thinking aloud. Let's use motivation and order. We can give, we'll use both of those and now let's check. Where's it going? Where's it going? Boom! Wow, look at that. B, B, it's already headed to Earth. We're done. Now, what should we do? That took two cards. We have three cards left and one more action. See, gotta remember our thing here. Send the signal and all rooms in the ship must be explored. And this guy has send the signal and the nest must have been destroyed. So I'm gonna go as a captain and I'm gonna go destroy the nest. Let's just get that done. Let's get it done. It's gotta be done, so we gotta move back. So we move back here, what card do we wanna do? Let's use that interruption card. We won't use that because that's an interruption card for him uh, if, if we were playing the semi co-op. All right, let's roll some noise. So, man, I know a lot of these sounds. Oops, did you see that go flying? Okay, so noise. Uh-oh, noise was in the corridor, right? And so noise is there. So you remove all the noise corridors, things, and we get a surprise attack. Okay, and we go to the back. What's gonna jump out on us, do you know? Let's get that blank. Let's get that blank. We got a little larva. A little green larva is in there. They're not too difficult, and it's a one. Do I have more than one card, one or more? I do, so I'm fine. It doesn't surprise attack me, and then that stays out to the side. Okay, now we go back to the soldier. So we gotta go check this, this engine, right? Uh, oh, that one's over there too. Uh, and we have one, two cards left, right? Yep, we spent one to get out. No, we spent two to get out, and one. No, we should only have one left. Yeah, because I had one. So let's use the basic repairs. Let's move. Super, let's move. We spend that, remember, because we only have four because our body is so wounded. Uh, and if we had this med kit, we could dress it, but here, we move in here and we have to do our noise roll. No noise, <laughs> silent as a cat. Next two cards to check that room, we can't do it. My cat just jumped up here, so if you see her investigating the game, then don't be surprised. All right, all right. Come back to the captain. So what he's going to do. Now what we want to learn is we want to learn how do we clear the nest, right? How do you destroy the nest? Well, it probably has, right there it is. Let's go look on our, anytime you got a question about the rooms, you get your, your board game, your, uh, your descriptions. Uh, destroying eggs. After every single attempt to destroy an egg, you must perform a noise roll. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, when there are no more eggs in the nest, they have all, the nest is considered destroyed. So we have to take the egg. We either take one egg and perform a noise roll or we try to destroy them. Huh, I could just keep taking them. I didn't realize that. I could just take them out or I could destroy them. What do I have here? What do I have here? Let's look, destroying eggs. Whenever characters room with any uncarried eggs, you can try to destroy these eggs. Resolve this action. As a shoot action or a melee action, 
Each, in, each injury of any type destroys one egg. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna shoot, right? Boop, shoot, it's a basic action. Doesn't matter what we do. We discard it and we discard a ammo and we grab the dice. I'll show you how this works. All we have to do is hit anything, right? We did, we hit a larva. No, that's a creeper. Doesn't matter, we hit it. We have destroyed one egg. Now guess what? You can just set those to the side. We have to make a noise roll. We made noise, right? X, no noise, we were quiet. Okay, we have one more ability. We'll shoot again using our suppressive fire. We would have hit an adult, doesn't matter, whatever we hit. We have killed two of the three, and guess what? We have to do another noise roll, right? This is loud, this business. And quarter four, we hear something. And that's not surprising, but okay. So my turn is over, we go to, and I have to pass because I have no more. He has to pass, no more. Then we go to, like I said, the back of the book again. Remember, I told you how to do the flow of the game. Go to the round order and you use this again. So now it's to the event phase. That means it's the intruders phase. Okay, move the time marker down. By the way, if you're wondering why there's a blue section, this hibernatorium will not open until it gets to the blue. So even if you get all your objectives done early, you have to hang around and that can be a, that can be a tough thing. Intruders attack. There's no intruders in any room. Yes, there is. There is a little bastard. I might have should have shot him. You know what? I might have made a mistake, but that's what you do when you play the game. You make mistakes. So let's see what he does. He attacks us. Boom. It's an adult a breeder or a queen. So he's not either of those, so he just doesn't, doesn't hurt us. Intruder fire damage, nothing's on fire. Resolve one event card. Here we go. Let's have another easy one. Boom. Okay, before you do that, the first thing is you do movement. Remember, first thing you do is movement. So the adults are assembled on the card and they move down corridor three. So that means he goes into the corridor. And when that happens is you take him off the map and then you take the adult token that came with him and put him back in the bag. So he's now scurrying around behind the scenes. Okay, so he's off, but he's still in the bag. Now this guy goes down corridor three, so he goes back to the surgery. Okay, now what do we have to do? This is the weird one. Uh, oh, we have to resolve the event effect. We have to read the card. Evacuation pod ejection. Launch the escape pod token with the lowest number. That would be number one. Just shoots off into space. That's not good. Remove this event from the game and reshuffle the events deck, including the discard pile. Okay, I don't know why it does that, but that's fine. Do it again. That can't happen again. Woo! That means there's only one if we need to get out of here. That's, that's a little close. Then, bag development, remember? Bag development, and I think that's on page 10 that we decided. It is on page 10. And what you do is you pull a random one out. Let's see what we got. And we pulled a larva. So let's see what it says. Read it with me. Remove this token from the intruder bag. Boom, it's gone. And add one adult intruder token to the bag. So we go and get an, an adult and a larva has turned into a intruder. Well, we have an intruder of our own. That is Ragpaw. So. We're just gonna pretend she's not here and hope she goes away. All right, all right, all right. We move to the next round. Cat, Captain is the cat again. You are really gotta go. You really gotta go. Yep, you're cute, but you gotta go. There you go, get out of here. Super, okay. So the captain's deck is used, all 10 cards are used, so you shuffle. And that's pretty easy to do. Just shuffle real quick. And now you draw five cards. Two, three, four, five. Super. Let's look at them. What do we got? Got a search, got a rest, got a demolition, got a motivation, and got an interruption. Uh, let's kill, let's shoot. Oh, we, we shot twice, right? So our six shooter is, uh, is gone. Let's shoot again, right? But this time, let's shoot this larva. Let's get that guy dead. I want him dead. And I hit him. So that means I have a dead... Uh, to sorry, I threw that. Uh, this that is the carcass of a dead uh, intruder. Now remember, this guy is carrying his buddy, 
And if I carry that to the lab, I can discover one intruder carcass weakness. I don't know if I'm gonna have time to even consider that. So right now, let's just take the next shot uh, with a rest. And oh, I have to run a noise, remember? Don't forget that. So corridor four. So I don't get to take the second shot because corridor four, we get to go into the bag. Something happens. Remember, you clear the tokens. You're learning quick. You're ready to play this game. You're getting close to ready to play this by yourself. You get an adult. So happy day for us, right? Let's get a different model. Let's get this big one. He shows up. Flip it over. And remember what we do it? We look at the three. How many cards do we have? We have four. So he doesn't surprise attack us. And then we set that aside. All right. So my turn is over. I have done two actions. Remember? Two. Okay. Let's go over here to this guy. He's only got two cards there, so we have to shuffle. And unfortunately, if you remember, his body is so wounded that he only draws four action cards. That sucks. So there's the four. What do we got? What do we got? We have Nerves of Steel, Full Auto, Search, and Covering Fire. So what we need to do is make see if this engine's working. So we're gonna have to spend two. That's the first action. Let's do Search and Nerves of Steel. Uh, yep. And let's check it. Let's check it. It is damaged. And we don't have the fix it card. Let's see if there's, a, we can just fix it without the fix it card. Repair or break engine. Your character can perform a repair break engine action in this room using a repairs action or a tools item card. We don't have that. We, it's in here somewhere, remember? We have, and that just sucks. That just sucks, we can't repair it. Two cards to check it, we need the repairs action. Right, and so I'll show you this, there's probably a basic repairs action, yep, it's in there. I'll shuffle that again when I use it. Oh my, what do we do? Do we literally sit and wait? We probably do, so we pass. We pass and our turn is over. We're just gonna wait until we draw and hope to heck we get it. Soldiers just, okay. Let's do it. What, is, what does this guy do? Well, the problem is, is he's gotta kill these eggs and at the same time, he's got someone to deal with. Well, let's, let's take a shot. At the egg or him? Oh man. What do we do? What do we do? We can have a poll. Uh, we're going to rest. And that means we're gonna shoot. We're gonna shoot at this guy because I want you to know how that happens before we wrap up this video. So here we go, we shoot. Okay, so what that tells us is we hit a, a, a creeper or up or down. So it would be a creeper or a, well, there is no, there is no uh, larva on here. So a creeper is hit or, or below. This is an adult, so that means we missed. So we shot again and we missed. So, and that took a card. We have to spend a card to do that. So let's do it again. Let's shoot him a second time. Okay, we hit. So this is how this works. It's a little weird, but we don't know whether these guys are real hurt or not. So we find out if we kill them, because we just did one damage, right? This thing does one damage, the six shooter. So we take the intruder, is it the events? Uh, asking me to remember, let's look at the bottom of the pile. Yes, it's the intruder attack, we flip it over. That's where we need the, the, the blood. So does he have six hits? Nope, he doesn't. He has one. And what we do is we take this little symbol, this little marker, and we put it on him. He's got one hit. So does he die? Nope. So then we put that underneath. Okay, so we've used our two actions, right? Yes, we did the interruption the first time. He came and attacked, and I guess we took our turn. We should have actually attacked him. Uh, oh, we did. We took, it, we took and killed the, the guy on us. Okay, so now though, we use two of those cards to shoot. Okay, so it comes back to me because he's taking a pass, so I'm gonna take a third shot. Okay, the, well, let's see. Okay, blank, missed, there goes the ammo. You're gonna see the ammo runs out. Not good, 
All right, all right. So, do you know enough to play? Do you know enough to play? I think you do. The rest of us in the rules, I think you know how to play. There's a few things I'm gonna explain at the end. So for us to win, we would get the ships going to the right area. He's gonna fix that or make sure that's green. We don't know, because we should have done that in a different order, but we didn't. Then we have to explore every one of these rooms. We have to kill these last three eggs, which kills that nest. Then we have to get back in this hibernatorium before this thing destroys, by the way, and put ourselves to sleep. There are some rules about that. When you go back into the hibernatorium and you put yourself into the hibernate thing, cop takes two cards and you make a noise roll. So it's tough to get in there. Uh, there's another way to get out of here, which is to get through this room, okay? Which is the hatch control system, right? This is lock, unlock, one escape pod. So we could, <clears throat> we could get to this room, spend two cards and unlock this, and then we could get back here. It's actually pretty close, get in it, and again, we'd make a noise roll before we got in to see if an intruder did. And if we got in successfully, we'd jettison and we'd get home. Uh, so there is a way to survive that one. Clearing all these rooms, there's a lot of rooms. The best thing to understand, and you'll refer to it even if you played it many times, is these additional rooms, the basic room sheets. So the basic rooms, they always tell you what you need to know and you'll be fine. One of them is the lab. In there, you can search for the lab. You can take bodies, you can take an intruder carcass, an intruder egg, or a character corpse. So I probably only should kill two of those and then take one with me, except for, and then take that corpse so I could carry both maybe, and then get out of there. And then, once we did all those things, we'd get back. Now one of the things that happens, we haven't been contaminated yet, is we'll often get contaminated. And there's cards and rules in the game, you can look them up in here or you can just look them in here, where you check the contaminated card. And if you get contaminated, you what you are contaminated and you have to go get it fixed that means you have to go to the surgery or there's another room i believe in fact i'm almost sure of it let's check huh surgery maybe it is just the surgery but there's items that you can use as well now another piece of the rules that you should know is the item to use this item i have to discard a card so don't forget that you discard this item it's one use and a card um, that's an easy way to do it. You do your bag development, you go to all your rooms, everything will be described. Now when you get to the end, if you all get back in the thing, then you've got all your things done, you've considered you've won. Unless you have some contamination cards, and then you check those, and if you do, there's a rule set in here um, that tells you how to handle that. Uh, you reshuffle your cards and you pull four, and if any of them is that card, you die. And if you don't, you lived and you made it. You made it out. Um, character wounds are described in here, intruder weakness cards to help you. One, one suggestion is when you get those intruder weaknesses and you discover them in the laboratory, rem try to remember them. I've often discovered weaknesses and then forgot to use them. Um, intruder death and injury, that guy has always got one and every time we hit him, we'll flip and see if we kill him. And if the number is equal to the number of markers on him, then you've killed him. Everything else is pretty simple. One okay, one thing I didn't mention. Slime. Some of these rooms will slime you. They will slime you. Which means you're slippery and you make more noise when you roll the dice. When you hit the uh, X, it's considered a it's considered a, a clause. So you make more noise. And the, you can go to the shower and get that cleaned up. Another piece of this game, we haven't seen it yet when we turn these things, is fire. When fire gets out of control, the whole ship burns up. So I always recommend everyone playing this game. You see fire, you do what you can to get it out. Hopefully someone has a fire extinguisher. If you don't, find one and get the fire out. If you get too many of these markers, the ship is gonna go down. Uh, I think it's eight in either one. Eight fire markers and eight malfunction markers. Okay, yep, if there are eight malfunction markers in the game, if you're instructed to place a marker and there are no more markers, so the ninth one, the whole thing goes down. Right? Okay, there's the doors, there's noise. You have all the rules you need to play this fantastic game. And I just want to say, as I wrap this up, thank you for watching, and I hope this was help you. helpful. The whole idea is to have you come into my house, sit with me, and let me teach you the game. So I'm doing it a little different. When you watch most videos out there, you'll see uh, they just go over the rule book, piece by piece by piece by piece. 
I wanted you to sit and be invited in here into my house and play with me because this is how I teach people. I set them down, I give them the cards and we just dive in. They're like, I, I don't understand everything. That's fine. Come with me. Just we'll do this. I'll explain it as we go and we get them playing quicker. Having said that, this video is probably about an hour long, but I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, I'm going to steal Rodney's words. I'm going to say thanks for watching. Hello and thank you for watching my very first video on how to play. Now, I've been thinking more and more as I do these videos. We're over 135 right now. And I've been thinking about the thing that I like to do most, which is teach. I'm a natural teacher. I'm a natural coach. I coach men in men's work. I coach couples in intimacy and marriage. I'm a therapist, a counselor. So I love to help people. So this is my first crack at it. And it's probably where the channel is going to go in the end. And I wanted to leave this little message at the end, kind of as a piece of posterity so that everyone can know that this was my very first attempt. So to all the people who've been doing this for a long while, like Rodney and all the others, wow, it is not easy. Not only that is the editing, there is all the filming, setting up the whole thing. And I chose a very complex game, Nemesis, because I love it to start with. I hope and the niche I want to create, I'm setting this out here, we'll see if it develops, is the idea of you coming into my house and me teaching you to play, right? Because a lot of the videos out there are just literally reading the rule book. They're just like reading the rule book, even some of the best ones. And I think, but how do I teach you if you came to my house? Well, you'd come, you sit down, and I'd give you the overview, and I, and I really give you the big high-level feeling of it, like in Nemesis, you know, you're gonna wake up, in a ship, it's on fire or it's not, or it's broken, things are going wrong and you gotta check the engines, you gotta check the cockpit, you make it back to earth, you gotta get back into the hibernatorium and you got to get yourself back asleep. That's the overview. And knowing that you're like, you can relax. This is what I am. I play a character that's got these things. And then you can learn the rules as you go. So that's what we're gonna attempt to do in this series. The first of the series is this one. And I thank you for watching. Hopefully years later, this will still be on YouTube and one day I'll get to go back and look at it and go, wow, that's where it all began. And if you do get to see this, then this is where it began. Now, let me wrap up with one final thing. Appreciation is deep for this whole field, the challenge, the connection, just the joy that is gaming. If you watch this video and it helped, let me know. And if it didn't help, let me know. Get your fingers tap a tap a tapping in the comments and give me some feedback. I invite it. It could be terrible. It could be the worst video you've ever seen. That's fine. I'm okay with all feedback. And I'm just generally happy that I get this opportunity, right? And I'm specifically happy that I get to talk to you and that we get to play one of the best games in the world. I love this game so much. It's called Nemesis. And as they say, uh, nobody can hear you scream in space.